Now, in this lecture, we're going to talk about one scaling methodology, which is very popular in the social sciences, and that is Likert scaling. Likert scaling was a scaling methodology. It's a process that was designed by Renesis Likert that results in a one-dimensional scale. So, in our previous lectures, we've talked about different types of constructs. We've talked about one-dimensional constructs and two or more dimensional or multi-dimensional constructs like socioeconomic status, uh, like latitude, altitude, longitude, and so on and so forth. So the types of scales we use defines or is defined by the underlying construct. Constructs that are one-dimensional utilize one-dimensional scales. Constructs that are necessarily multi-dimensional utilize multi-dimensional scales. One-dimensional scales are usually easier to understand. They're very straightforward. They usually have very few items, five to ten items, and they're usually very useful for understanding other multidimensional processes. So you can have multiple single-dimensional constructs that can cumulatively look at different dimensions of a multidimensional construct. So you can have one measuring one dimension, second measuring the second dimension, one measuring so, uh, education, one measuring income, putting them together, you get socioeconomic status, which is income and education. One-dimensional scales are also popular because many items are inherently one-dimensional. We talked about constructs that are one-dimensional and therefore many of these scales are also inherently one-dimensional. Multidimensional scales reflect multiple properties and at least for the for this course it's about it's beyond the, the scope of an introductory research methods class. So I'm not going to talk too much about multidimensional scales. But there are many different types of one-dimensional scaling methods. There's Thurston scaling, Likert scaling, and Gutman scaling. We're going to talk about two of them. I'm going to leave the third one for you to read from the text. Now, Likert scaling is a very popular scaling methodology, so we're first going to talk about Likert scaling. Now, I'm going to work with an example. Um, here's a scale that I've actually designed using students in my classes. So when I teach this course face-to-face, -face, I usually have my class work together to develop a scale. One of the scales that I use in my own research that I have developed in multiple classes is a scale for what I call as cyber risk beliefs. So whenever we come up with a scale, we first have to begin by defining the construct and understanding what it is that we're trying to measure. So let me explain what cyber risk beliefs are. Cyber risk beliefs are people's inherent beliefs perceptions about the risk of doing certain behaviors or risk of doing things online. So for instance, you know, what are your beliefs about uh, opening certain types of files on your computer? What are your beliefs about going to certain types of websites? What are your beliefs about sending certain types of file types, either through FTP or through some kind of email? So these are cumulatively uh, all the different ways in which you can think about cyber risk beliefs. So. If I want to measure that using a Likert scaling methodology, the first step always involves starting with a large set of items that you think reflects the same construct. So I usually will begin with a large set, which would be 80 to 100 items. So here's the definition of the construct. It is an individual's beliefs about the risks of actions or behaviors they undertake online. You come up with 80 to 100 statements that reflect the measure or the construct. You must be able to answer each question, each item, each of those statements that you come up with using a 1 to 5 strongly disagree to strongly agree response scale. So here's an example of some sample items, right? So it could be items like, I believe that the risk of getting infected by spyware, mal malware, or a virus is a lot more when opening an email from a stranger, opening a PDF attachment opening a link in an, email, in an email with a shortened URL, and so on. Once we come up with our items, the next step in Likert scaling is to ask a group of judges to rate each item on a scale of 1 to 5. What the judges are doing is pretty important. What the judges are doing is they're rating the favorability of the item. They're not giving you their perception of whether or not that is a risk that they agree or disagree with. They're trying to rate the fit between the item and the construct definition that we gave them. So if a person thinks the item, the statement, very accurately reflects the underlying construct, they would say five, um, it's very favorable. If they say it does not, they would say one, very unfavorable. Now, once you come up with your items, 
and you get your scores from your judges, you use certain statistical techniques to decide which of the items you keep. Now again, these statistical techniques are outside the scope of this class and you really don't need to know to do them. But for those of you interested, you could use correlations where items which have low correlations with the overall set of items, the, the sum of all the items, are items which you'll keep. You'll get items uh, based on the ones that discriminate really well. We use t-tests, we use certain other statistical procedures to measure the internal consistency of the items. And, and so basically we go through a statistical procedure, analytical procedure, and we end up with the items. Uh, here's an example of a six item scale that we used using this procedure. So here's a six item scale and how the respondent uses these items is for each of them he gives a one to five or a zero to five rating. Now in this case when the respondent is using it, she or he, she or he is giving you their assessment of their cyber risks. They're not telling you the favorability. Now you're using the scale as it's supposed to be used. Once the respondent gives you their scores, you sum the scores, um, which is basically taking the average, and this is sum or the average, so you can take the total sum of every response, total it up, and divide it by the number of items, or you can keep the raw scores. This is the reason why a Likert type scale is called, a like, rather a Likert scale is called a summated scale. A summated scale or a Likert scale is a scale in which people give you responses using a one to five response scale and the sum of the items represent the individual standing on that construct of interest. So here's an example of that particular scale that we just created, the six item scale. The respondent gives you a range of scores from one to five. The sum score has a range of 12, uh, has, the sum score is 12, which is one plus two plus two plus two plus three plus two. And it has a range from between five, which is the minimum that a person can get, all the way to 30, which is the maximum a person can get. Okay.